Jack the Ripper, a murderous psychopath lurking in the streets of London in the 1880s. What made this serial killer infamous was his strange way of targeting only women prostitutes, mutilating and cutting their throats. Despite the specific target of victims, Jack the Ripper instilled fear in the people of London and splashed the headlines for weeks on end. But who is the person behind these killings? And why was he never put behind bars? On August 31, 1888, Marianne Nichols was found dead. Her body was disfigured, and her throat was slit. People didn't know it yet, but this would be the start of a series of brutal murders committed by Jack the Ripper. Welcome to our channel. Today we'll dive into the case of Jack the Ripper, and who is the man behind the feared name that spread fear in 18th century England. Who knows? Maybe you had an idea even before watching this video. Let us know your speculations in the comments down below. In the dark annals of history, a notorious, unidentified serial killer known as Jack the Ripper wreaked havoc upon the impoverished Whitechapel district of London, England, in 1888. The sinister figure targeted vulnerable women, preying on those who worked as prostitutes. The toll of his heinous acts amounted to at least five victims, earning these unfortunate souls the moniker Canonical Five. Over a chilling nine-week period, between August and November 1888, the streets of Whitechapel bore witness to the brutal murders of Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly. While there have been speculations surrounding additional potential victims, history widely acknowledges these five women as the hauntingly accepted casualties of Jack the Ripper's merciless reign of terror. The elusive killer left a profound mark on London society during and after the infamous Jack the Ripper case. The murders not only terrified the city at the time, but also sparked long-lasting repercussions. The East End of London, where the killings took place, became the focal point of attention due to the stark spotlight thrown on the prevailing poverty and social unrest in the area. One of the most fascinating theories that emerged from the murders is how the murders have led some people to believe that Jack the Ripper might be in the medical field. The enigma surrounding Jack the Ripper's potential medical background arises for multiple compelling reasons. The precise and surgical nature of the inflicted cuts on the victims has led experts to surmise that the killer possessed medical knowledge and training. Furthermore, the removal of organs from the victims' bodies suggests an understanding of anatomy and surgical procedures, further fueling suspicions about the killer's background. Another puzzling aspect is the relatively limited presence of blood at the crime scenes, despite the severity of the injuries inflicted. This has led some to speculate that the perpetrator knew techniques to minimize bleeding, adding to the intriguing puzzle of his identity. Additionally, the calculated nature of the murders, combined with the perpetrator's ability to evade capture, has led to conjecture that the killer may have possessed a high IQ, enabling him to carry out the heinous acts and leave little to no trace that could lead to his identification. Jack the Ripper's potential medical knowledge, surgical precision, anatomical understanding, and ability to minimize bloodshed, coupled with a possibly high level of intelligence, continue to be key aspects that intensify the mystery surrounding one of history's most notorious serial killers. But you might be surprised that the most solid suspect right now is a barber named Aaron Kosminski. The precision of the cuts and the fixation on killing with a sharp murder weapon make it somehow reasonable for Kosminski to be Jack the Ripper after all. But maybe you can't help but think, that's it? The age-old mystery boiled down to a clinically insane but seemingly average Polish barber? Using DNA evidence from a shawl discovered near Catherine Eddowes's body, researchers Jari Luhalainen and David Miller conducted genetic tests that indicated the DNA matched that of Aaron Kosminski, a hairdresser who emigrated from Congress Poland to England in the 1880s and worked in Whitechapel, the location of the Jack the Ripper murders. The DNA analysis also revealed that Kosminski likely had brown eyes and hair, aligning with the Ripper's description. However, there is an ongoing debate among experts about the sufficiency of this evidence in definitively identifying Kosminski as the infamous killer. Aaron Mordki Kosminski, later known as Aaron Kosminski, was born on September 11, 1865, in Congress, Poland. After threatening his sister with a knife in 1891, he was institutionalized and held at the Colney Hatch Lunatic Asylum, then later transferred to the Leavesden Asylum. At the age of 53, 
Kosminski died in a London mental hospital in 1919. Despite the potential connection between Kosminski and the Ripper, it is essential to acknowledge the presence of opposing arguments and the ongoing scrutiny surrounding the strength of the evidence linking him to the infamous crimes. Were you disappointed, or did pinning everything on Kosminski make you piece everything together in Jack the Ripper's case? We have more to tell you about what happened, but first you can click the like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying this video so far. Going back, here are the other pieces of evidence that point to Kosminski. According to the McNaughton Memoranda, Aaron Kosminski, along with Montague John Druitt and Michael Ostrog, was deemed more likely to be Jack the Ripper than Thomas Cutbush. Described as a Polish Jew who lived in the very heart of the district where the murders were committed, Kosminski was believed to have succumbed to insanity due to indulgence in solitary vices. Chief Inspector Donald Swanson, responsible for assessing all the information on the Jack the Ripper case, also considered Kosminski a strong suspect in the infamous murders. However, some remained skeptical of the DNA evidence and the historical authenticity of the shawl used in the identification process, raising doubts about the conclusive nature of linking Kosminski to the notorious crimes. Interestingly, famous figures at the time were suspected in the search for Jack the Ripper's true identity. Despite Lewis Carroll, the renowned author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, arousing suspicion as a potential Jack the Ripper due to his photography interests and certain pictures taken in the vicinity of the murder sites, there is no substantial evidence to substantiate this notion. This theory lacks credibility and is generally rejected by experts in the field. Meanwhile, according to some theorists and authors, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence, and Avondale, Queen Victoria's grandson, came under suspicion as being Jack the Ripper. The theory implied that he might have fathered a child with a woman in London's Whitechapel district and that the murders were committed by him or other high-ranking individuals to conceal the alleged affair. However, this claim faces significant challenges as contemporary documents prove that Albert Victor could not have been in London during the time of the murders, leading experts to dismiss the theory. Supporting this dismissal, an issue of the Times dated October 1, 1888, reported the murder of two women in London on the previous night, while Prince Albert Victor's documented presence at Balmoral Castle in Scotland on September 30th contradicts any direct involvement in the crimes. Consequently, the theory linking Prince Albert Victor to Jack the Ripper is regarded as highly unlikely and lacks solid evidence to back its claims. But despite the active manhunt for Jack the Ripper and the millions of people who wanted to know who he truly was, why did it take so long to figure out that it was probably Kosminski who did the murders? Well, here are a few reasons. The murders occurred during the late 19th century when forensic technology lacked the sophistication of modern times and DNA analysis was unavailable. The chaotic crime scenes and limited investigative techniques of that era resulted in scarce evidence and less refined methods of analysis. Adding to the complexities, the murders were perpetrated in the dimly lit and secluded streets of Whitechapel, making accurate descriptions or identification of the killer by witnesses challenging. As a consequence, Numerous individuals have been suspected of being Jack the Ripper over the years, leading to confusion and conflicting theories and preventing a definitive identification of the true culprit. Furthermore, the passage of time has resulted in the loss or destruction of some evidence collected during the original investigation, further hindering efforts to solve the case. These factors combined have created a veil of mystery shrouding one of history's most infamous unsolved mysteries. As the haunting tale of Jack the Ripper continued to captivate the public's imagination, a dedicated field of study emerged known as Ripperology. Enthusiastic researchers and amateur sleuths delved into the intricacies of the case, making it a serious pursuit for many. Decades after the heinous crimes, the Jack the Ripper case still resonates, serving as a grim reminder of the societal issues it exposed while simultaneously fueling the enduring fascination and speculation among people from all walks of life. Furthermore, the passage of time has resulted in the loss or destruction of some evidence collected during the original investigation, further hindering efforts to solve the case. Jack the Ripper operated under the cover of darkness, wearing a disguise, and exploiting the crowded and impoverished conditions of Whitechapel, making it difficult for witnesses to identify or recall pertinent details about the killer. These factors combined 
have created a veil of mystery shrouding one of history's most infamous unsolved mysteries. But if you can't sleep soundly at night without knowing who he truly was, the easier route to take is to blame the Polish barber Aaron Kosminski, because the most solid pieces of evidence so far point to him. We hope that you enjoyed exploring this mystery with us. Tune in to our next videos by subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell. Also, don't forget to give this video a like. Thank you for watching.